Welcome, hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about the five multicultural things we learned about Nasser Hussain and reveal those highs and lows. Hopefully, it will inspire or even motivate you. As we only judge a person here by their character, not race, colour or religion. So please join our multicultural family if new. My name is Bobby A. Said. I'm the founder of The Emma Show. As you can see from these articles, Nasser Hussain didn't have an easy life. Let's hear from Nasser Hussain, who was the first ever England Muslim captain of England cricket team and was able to receive this motocross award when he was away playing for England. We had hoped that this award would help to promote a better motocross environment within the many English cricket clubs, considering the new revelation from Azim Rafiq, who had been a victim of racism at Yorkshire Cricket Club. Hi, I'm Nasser Hussain, uh, working hard at my golf swing here in Buckinghamshire. Uh, I'd just like to thank everyone at the Emma organisation and all the British public for voting me Sports Personality of the Year. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight. Enjoy your dinner and hopefully I'll see you next year. Thank you very much. Number one, resilient. Nasser Hussain was born on the 28th of March 1968 in Chennai, India. He grew up as a Muslim along with his brothers Mel and Benazir Hussain. His father, Raza Jawad Hussain was an Indian cricketer in the early 60s and his mother Shireen Hussain and is English. They, Hussain's lived comfortable life in India until 1975 when Nasser's father moved the family to Ilford, East London. Britain was experienced the end of the post-war economic boom as well as the end of the social liberation that defined the 1960s with Thatcher's radical conservatism encouraging widespread privatisation and free enterprise. This was met with a lot of worry from the public who enjoyed the employment security of the previous decade. The lower earning families were soon starting to feel the effect of the decline in the country's stable industries of coal and cotton that led to mass unemployment from here on. Nasser's early influences in sports came from Britain. He showed an interest in golfing, cricketing and football from the age of five, hence our video when he received the Emmers at a golf club. He cites Laurie Cunningham, Tony Woodcock and Brian Robson, who particularly shaped his passion for sports. Nasser's father began running a local cricket school where at the age of eight, young Nasser found his passion for leg spin bowling. He very quickly began playing for the Essex under 11 and 15 teams, going on to play against other English schools. It was here when he first crossed paths with his future teammate, Mike Atherton, who was at that point considered the golden boy of the sports in the country. However, at the age of 15, Nasser had grown considerably taller, disabling his ability to bowl leg spin. To the disappointment of his father, he began to bat for the under-16 teams, which took him a while to get used to. Although scoring 1,000 runs in his first under-16 season as a team captain, the weight of his father's expectations continued to loom over him. He continued to bat all through school and into university, where he attended the University of Durham, to study natural sciences. Durham was and continues to be a strong cricketing university. During his final year at university, Nasser toured Sri Lanka with the English young cricketers. His performance as a batman garnered him entry into the Essex County team in 1987. And by 1989, he was voted as Cricket Writers Club Young Cricketer of the Year. Number two, passion. Nasser made his test cricket debut in 1990 after graduating with his bachelors the year prior. The test team were playing the West Indies, who they eventually lost to in the series 2-1. During the game, he developed a fiery temper, jeopardising his position on the England team. He continued to play for Essex in the county championship, helping the county secure a win in 1991 above Warwickshire. After another championship win for Essex the year after, England captain Graham Gooch invited Nasser back onto the test team, although seeing through the rest of the series. Scoring 71 to 47, it wasn't enough points to see him through the up and coming winter tour. The series saw a heated dispute between Nasser and the England team captain Graham Gooch, 
which continued through his games playing for Essex. In 1993, he was voted Essex's top player, despite his suspension by Graham Gooch. Nasser was granted the chance to captain the England A team during their tour in Pakistan. Although losing the game, he returned in 1996 playing against India. He proved his worth on the team by scoring 128 innings, where he was awarded Man of the Match series, helping secure England's victory. For the next winter tour, Nasser was England's vice captain under the wing of Michael Atherton. Playing in Zimbabwe and New Zealand, Nasser's batting was vital in helping England tie with Zimbabwe and win against New Zealand. The following June, Nasser broke his highest professional career score with 207 innings against Australia, who England went on to beat. By the end of 1998, he was appointed captain of Essex County team. A great achievement, Nasser went on to be England's top run scorer in the next Ashes series against Australia. July 1999 saw Nasser become England's captain, being the third non-English born captain for England in its history behind Freddie Brown and Donald Carr in the 50s and the 60s. Number three, conviction. His first match as test captain was against New Zealand. It was a bad defeat for NASA and the England team, who were booed by the English fans. The captain quickly found his feet, helping to win the next four test series against the West Indies, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. NASA was determined to fight for his newly appointed status as England captain. By the end of 2000, the England team had risen to third place at the ICC Test Championship. The following year, NASA took his team to the 2002 NatWest Series against India and Sri Lanka. It has since been considered to be one of the best one-day international tournaments of all times. Although eventually being beaten by India, NASA and his team played admirably. NASA's last big game came in the form of the 2003 Cricket World Cup, with a promising start winning against Netherlands. England failed to make the second round of the tournament, deciding to boycott their match against Zimbabwe due to the social unrest that was happening in the country at the time. After the match, he stepped down as team captain of England's one-day international team. Number four, honesty. Soon after announcing his retirement, he joined Sky Sports commentary team alongside former England captains Bob Willis, David Gower and Ian Bofan, where he continues to host interviews and talks on Sky Sports alongside his close friend Mike Atherton. In 2004, he released his autobiography, Playing With Fire, to critical acclaim, winning the best autobiography in the 2005 British Sports Book Awards. The book spoke of his younger years and the strained relationship he had with his father to batting from a spot on the England team later in his professional career. Since 2010, Nasser has been coaching at the Catholic boarding school, New Hall School in Essex. He has been responsible for organising fixtures and competitions amongst other schools, as well as cricket tours abroad, including Cape Town and Sri Lanka. In August 2011, his live comments against the Indian team created some backlash amongst the cricket community. In 2021, he has recently gone on to speak against England lineup, claiming that the England team needs to take more responsibility. Nasser also made a cameo appearance as himself in Nikhil Advani's Bollywood sports drama, Patilla House. In 2011, although playing a minor character, his humorous appearance poked fun at his success in cricket. Number five, discipline. In 1993, Nasser married Karen Hussain, going on to father Joe Jacob and Layla Hussain. Joe, the eldest, has gone on to play for the under 13 cricket leagues and now plays for Essex County team. In early 2001, he was awarded his Order of the British Empire for his work and dedication to cricket. This marked the country's recognition of his impact in cricket culture as a whole and attempts to improve the race relations within the game that sadly has a long way to go to eradicate the game from institutional racism. His contribution to promoting multicultural values are highly regarded at Emma and his achievements within the sports of cricket are admired by many around the world. 
Between 1999 and 2004, NASA captained 45 test matches for England's team. As of 2013, he continues to be the fourth highest scoring test captain, winning 17 games. He is considered to be one of the greatest England cricketers of all times, often labelled as a cunning strategist in the sports and a prolific captain who spoke his mind. Famously praised by Sachin Tendulkar as the best captain he played against, he was known for accurately anticipating each shot and coordinating his team accordingly. NASA's prolific 14-year-long career faced challenges and hardship, but his brutal honesty and passion for the craft broke down the barriers of race that still discriminates against ethnic minority talent. This can still be seen today with a lack of diversity amongst the current cricket setup, as revealed at the parliamentary hearing recently. That was both shocking and sad that the use of the P word is just banter, further discriminating against all British Pakistanis or even South Asians as a whole who are already unfairly labelled as some terrorists. In summary, his spot in the commentary box has solidified his status as a cricket legend as well as an important figure in the world of sports as cricket commentator. Shining a torch down onto the shadow of racism that continues to loom over the sporting world. Why don't you leave us a comment and share your own thoughts about Nashua Sain on how hard it must have been for a British Muslim to become England captain? And was he ever subjected to the P word? Has the recent revelations about institutional racism in cricket reflects present racism within society disguised as usual banter? Would really appreciate a like or even a subscribe and if possible please donate on Patreon however little the amount to support this channel's ongoing mission to undertake multicultural campaigns. And remember it's what's inside that counts. A motto we have used at the Emmas as Nasser Hussein has proven as a minority, you have to be 10 times better than anyone else to even get noticed. So until next time, thank you for watching and keep it multicultural.